Hi there. Um, today I'm going to talk about is bad economic news good for your investment portfolio or bad for your investment portfolio. And that is something that is has been is a little bit confusing and perhaps uh, counterintuitive. Uh, one would expect that if there's good economic news that would lead to stock prices going up. But it doesn't always work like that. There's an argument that that could be based on the fact that poor economic conditions uh, would actually suppress demands for goods and services, and this would result in a change in central bank policy to raise rates in order to cool down inflation. Because typically, what causes inflation is elevated levels of demand. And elevated levels of, of, of demand uh, causing inflation can be problematic because it inflation in itself devalues the currency and it can cause many other problems. So in order to quell the inflation, central banks feel like they need to raise rates. Uh, in the current situation that we're in, it's not exactly known how much of this is supply driven, but um, the Federal Reserve and many central banks around the world have taken the position that they're going to do what they can to do at least their part uh, to destroy the demand side uh, of the inflation. Therefore, um, you know, if, if we were to have um, uh, poor economic data coming out, uh, an indication that demand for consumers is starting to fall off, um, that could actually be a positive thing as far as your investment portfolio because the market would anticipate um, that, um, that rates would come down and an economic recovery would ensue. Another way to talk about this is what is called the wealth effect. And um, it is often cited when talking about the stock market as a forward-looking indicator. Uh, it argues that as uh, stocks rise, investors are more wealthy and spend more uh, increasing economic activity. And conversely, when stocks go down, uh, investors are less wealthy and spend less, decreasing economic activity. Uh, these ideas um, between central bank policy and the wealth effect drive the, the stock market prices. Uh, driving stock market prices is not necessarily uh, an independent, or not too necessarily independent uh, phenomenon. Rather, these comp these uh, concepts work with one another. When central banks lower rates to uh, stimulate demand, that generates a uh, positive wealth effect, and then stock markets begin to rise. And conversely, when central banks uh, raise rates due to um, to reduce demand, to reduce inflationary pressures, that generates a negative wealth effect and stock markets fall. This phenomenon has led to the common saying, don't fight the Fed, uh, as in don't fight the Federal Reserve, as that is the ultimate driver of equity markets. But of course, equities are just one asset class. Does it hold true for real estate? I would argue that it does. It's essentially the same thing. But there's a key difference due to the fact that stocks are very liquid compared to real estate. Hence, the wealth effect applies, it just takes a little bit longer. For example, the North American equity markets have been falling uh, this year in anticipation of higher interest rates, well before they actually started to happen. While real estate prices and demand stayed strong throughout the first half of the year, and it's only in the past couple of months that we've really started to see the real estate market break down. Uh, it's also the phenomenon in real estate, uh, which I always find interesting, that before anticipated rate increases, there's a surge or a rush of consumers to get in uh, or to lock in uh, lower mortgage rates. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure this is the most rational behavior all the time, uh, as whatever interest rate interest that you'd be saving, you might be losing out on price. But there does seem to be the existence of this phenomenon, just for my uh, casual observation. You know, unless you were lucky enough to you know, lock in the rates uh, long enough to get in uh, and buy uh, after the dip, depending on how sharp the fall was, and then it might work out to your advantage. Anyways, the, the main concept here to understand is that markets are cyclical, and what goes up uh, must come down, and vice versa. It's an inherent part of the monetary system that we live in, and as investors, we must uh, understand it and, and uh, embrace it. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. Um, we've obviously relaunched here. Uh, used to be called, this channel used to be called Elias Talks Money. Uh, now it's the Axum Holdings um, YouTube channel. Um, so uh, we're still committed to the same thing, putting out good, decent quality content once or twice a week um, when I have enough time from 
my day job. Okay, so uh, we'll see you later.